November 1996, an unknown African striker makes his Premier League debut as he is subbed on for Southampton against Leeds United. And his first ever game in the Premier League would also remain his last. Ok, but what is so special about that? Players come and go, especially in England. But this striker right here is called Ali Dia. And Ali Dia's claim to fame is that he is a fraud. Even more than that, he's the biggest fraud in Premier League history. So I know that football fans nowadays on social media tend to inflate this word and call every single manager or player a fraud, including actual legends like Leo Messi or Pep Guardiola. But I can assure you that this guy right here is the actual definition of a real fraud. And as I said, we are talking about the one and only Ali Ja more commonly known as Ali Dia. And in this video I will tell you the iconic story of how exactly Ali Dia managed to trick a Premier League legend into signing him and even playing him. And if you are struggling to become a professional footballer yourself, maybe you can take some inspiration. So what exactly happened? Our story starts in 1996 when Graeme Souness, Liverpool legend and back then Southampton manager, received a surprising phone call. The man who rang him was no less than current World Footballer of the Year, Ballon d'Or winner 1995, George Weah. And here is what George Weah told Graeme Souness. Yo listen Graeme, I know you're a bit surprised that I'm calling you, but my cousin is currently in England and you might be interested in him. He's a very very talented striker man, we've played together at PSG for a couple of years and he's also made 13 caps already for the Senegal national team. So since I know your squad is a bit thin right now and you're desperately looking for a striker, you should really consider giving him a chance. Whoa, 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 okay, so a talented Senegalese striker who's played for PSG alongside George Weah in their best times and who's also made some caps for his country and scored a couple goals. And this came at a time where many African players were starting to go to Europe and actually succeed there. And on top of that, this guy got recommended by the current Ballon d'Or holder, George Weah. He has to be good, right? Well, apparently that was exactly what Graeme Souness had in mind too, because then he immediately went on to sign Ali Dia on a one-month trial contract for his club, Southampton. But what he didn't know was that in this phone call he was actually not talking to Ballon d'Or winner George Weah. Instead, the man who called Graham Souness that day was actually just a scammy agent, one of many who used the so-called George Weah trick, which was very common in order to get African players into European teams. But this was the first and the last time that it actually worked with a team on such a high level, Southampton a real Premier League team. So quite obviously, Ali Dia was not George Weah's cousin, but who was he? Well, at least the wannabe George Weah did not lie on the phone when he said that Ali Dia is a Senegalese striker. Born in 1965 and always passionate for football, Ali Dia moved to France for his studies in 1987. And there, besides doing university, he played for a couple of lower division French sites. So essentially, Ali Dia was a student who earned some little extra cash playing as a part-time footballer. And despite the fact that he was nowhere near professional level, he desperately wanted to become a full-time pro footballer. And that is why he decided to quit university in France to move around Europe looking for professional clubs to pick him up. And he even managed to play for some semi-professional sides in Finland and Germany. His biggest achievement was when German second Bundesliga side Lübeck signed him. And how did he get into those clubs? Well, he told the George Weah story. That is also why he would only play like 10 games for each of those clubs before being released. So then eventually his strategy wasn't successful anymore and he moved to England where he played for non-league side Blyth Spartans. That was in 1996 already and at that time Ali Dia was already 31 and of course far far away from becoming a professional footballer anytime soon. But yet just one month later the same man Ali Dia found himself in the Southampton training. And according to Graham Souness and the Southampton players at the time, Ali Dia wasn't doing particularly well in training. One of the players later revealed that they thought Dia was a Southampton fan who had won some sort of giveaway, some sort of competition to train with the team for a week. So they found it funny, but they didn't actually realize that Graham Souness had signed this guy because of a phone call. But after Dia had trained for one week with the Southampton team, it actually got serious. Because then Southampton had a very important home game coming up on the weekend against Leeds United. And Graham Souness' squad was actually super thin, they didn't have any depth and they only had two match-fit strikers for this game. One of the two being Ali Dia. 
And so Graham soon has made it possible. He had no choice but taking Ali Dia with the team into the matchday squad and putting him on the bench against Leeds United. But of course, he wasn't actually planning on bringing Ali Dia on. He was just hoping that everyone in the starting 11 stays fit. Well, but what had to happen actually happened. Southampton legend and by far their best player, Matt Letizier, got injured just 32 minutes into the game. Letizier was an offensive midfielder and apparently Graeme soon has just saw one single player on his bench who could play this position. So that is when it happened. The one and only Ali Dia made his Premier League debut in the 33rd minute against Leeds United. So did Ali Dia do well in this game? Ah, uh, not exactly. Okay, eyewitnesses report that this was by far the worst performance in the history of the Premier League. But you can't blame the lad. He was literally playing in the 7th division of English football just one month earlier. And obviously the Southampton bench also realized during the game that Ali Dia might not exactly be the talented striker who had played with George Weah at PSG. Just have a look at Matt Letizier's facial expression while he's realizing who he had been subbed off for. Well, and after a 53 minute disaster class from Ali Dia that was for sure entertaining but not really successful, he was actually subbed off for a centre back, even though Southampton were trailing 1 0. Yep, that is how bad he must have been. Matt Letizier later described Ali Dia's performance as he ran around the pitch like a Bambi on ice. To be fair, that is very, very harsh on our boy. Look at this highlight of Ali Dia's Premier League career. He's getting the ball there, then takes the shot and actually almost managed to score. Imagine if he had done that. At least he forced the keeper to make a save here. But Ali Dia wouldn't have become such a Premier League fan favorite if it wasn't for the things that happened after the game. So the next day after the match, Dia actually came to the club facilities to treat an injury. But then he left and no one at Southampton has ever seen him again. It is still known though that Ali Dia went back to the north of England where he finished the 1996-1997 season at two more non-league sites. But after that he completely disappeared from the stage. And it was only a few months after the game that the media started to realize what kind of fraud happened in November 1996 in the Premier League. So George Weah himself was asked in an interview if he knew where his cousin Ali Dia is. And he responded that he doesn't know anyone called Ali Dia. So this was when it became official. Graeme Souness and Southampton had been utterly scammed. And now the big question, what happened to Ali Dia in the years after 1997 when he disappeared from the stage? First of all, he has become an absolute legend and a myth in English football culture. The fact that he pulled it off as a non-league player to trick Graeme Souness into giving him his Premier League debut made Ali Dia a player of the category the streets won't forget. He's been a regular favorite for the top spots in several worst players or worst transfers of all time rankings and he even won the first place in the list of the 50 worst footballers ever released by the Times. And as crazy as English football fans are, of course they also created a song for Ali Dia, which goes more or less like this. Yeah, pretty cool, right? But the most important thing that gave Ali Dia this legendary status is the fact that he basically became a ghost. After 1997, Ali Dia seemed to have completely disappeared and pretty much no one knew where he was living or if he was even still alive. There were countless rumors. Some said he was dead. Some said he was a successful businessman. Some said he was a criminal hiding in a remote place somewhere on earth. And for almost 20 years, no no one knew where Ali Dia was and what happened to him. That was until 2016 when a journalist from the Bleacher Report finally had a breakthrough. They managed to find Ali Dia's parents back in Senegal and could even arrange a phone call with the man himself. And that was when Ali Dia's mysterious story was finally revealed and all the rumors could be killed. So first of all, four years after he disappeared from football, he didn't actually disappear because he stayed where he played last in Northern England in Newcastle. And there at the university, he actually received his graduation in business administration. And just two years later, he even made his master of business administration in the United States in San Francisco. And ever since, Ali Dia has indeed been working as a successful businessman. 
He stayed in Qatar for many years and then at the time of the interview in 2016 he was currently living in London with his family. And now, five years later, it is very likely that Ali Dia lives in Thailand where his son, Simon Dia, plays as a professional footballer, in the top division actually. Either way, it's cool to see that Ali Dia, the man who's constantly called a Premier League fraud and that's what he basically was, is now a successful businessman. He managed to get a good career, not in football, but in business. And now finally, in the short phone call that Ali Dia had with the Bleacher Report, he also wanted to clarify some of the things that he believes the media tells wrong about him. First of all, Ali Dia said that before his Premier League debut, he had been training with Southampton for a full month and also performed very well in training, scoring many goals. Well, Graeme Souness and the Southampton players said that Dia only trained with the team for a week and he was pretty bad, so I'm not quite sure who is right here. And the next thing that Dia wanted to clarify is that he didn't lie when he said that he played for PSG. According to him, he actually played for Paris Saint-Germain between 1986 and 1998, but in the second division. That is a bit dodgy because in these years PSG played in the first division of France and there was no PSG reserve team in the second division either, so I'm not sure about that. And finally, Ali Dia stick to his story that he knows George Weah. Despite not being George Weah's cousin, Ali Dia told the Bleacher Report that his sister is a very close friend of the iconic footballer and that is how Ali knows him too. Well, that sounds pretty weird considering George Weah said that he has no idea who Ali Dia is, but anyway. So since all of these things Ali Dia wanted to clarify clearly contradict the facts or what other eyewitnesses said, I wouldn't be too sure about them. Nevertheless, Ali Dia remains one of the most mysterious and most iconic figures of English football culture. His story will forever remain one of the strangest but also funniest in Premier League history. And I have to admit that I absolutely love stories like this because they make the beautiful game even more beautiful in my opinion. And I totally love Ali Dia for pulling this off. He deserves so many shithouse rewards. One single prank phone call was enough to convince a seasoned Premier League manager to sign you and play you. So now you guys all know what you have to do if you want to become a professional footballer. Jokes aside, whether this would still be possible in today's connected football world with much more detailed research technologies and the internet being far more advanced is honestly questionable. But I can't lie, I'd love to see such a story again, so try your best guys. Of course I'm wondering how an experienced guy like Graeme Souness, a legend of English football, could fall for such a trick. But after all, you also have to ask yourself why Paul Pogba wasn't there to prevent that. With this final question in mind, I will be seeing you guys next week. Fiago is out. Peace.